My name is Michael Lehman, and this is Trailers from Hell. And today I'm going to talk about Dr. Strangelove, the movie that I'm sure everybody who's watching this has already seen, because if you're savvy enough to come on to the Trailers from Hell website, you've probably seen the movie many times. It is um, celebrated, iconic, fantastic, great. Uh, many, many people, myself included, think it's, if not the best satirical comedy of the last half of the 20th century, it's probably among the top two or three. And for me, it is reflexively, if people say to me, what is your favorite movie? I just say, oh, Dr. Strangelove. I was trying to think before I came in here, I was thinking, what is it about this movie that sticks with me? Why does it mean anything to me at all? As a teenager, I discovered the film. I saw it. I thought it, on first viewing, it is probably the funniest movie I'd ever seen. It is, you know, great political satire. We all know it's about... Uh, nuclear destruction, it's about the arms race, it's about the communist witch hunt, it sort of encompasses all sorts of things that were in the air in the, in the 20 years after the, the Second World War. It has great performances from Peter Sellers, from Sterling Hayden, from George C. Scott, among many others, and to me now, what it is more than anything else is a masterpiece of comic tone. So, as a director, you look at this thing and you say, how was Kubrick able to, and how were the actors able to walk that fine line between absolutely straight delivery of serious things in a, in a comic context, which brings the humor to it? When did they know when to elevate? When did they know when to be aware of the humor? When did they know how to be silly, when to be silly? And it's just, it's a fascinating study of tone because the choices that were made by all those people seem to be as good as they possibly Possibly could make them. When the dialogue itself is completely absurd, it's all delivered straight enough, but this movie somehow manages to hit it right. And, and I know there are famous things that if you read about the film, people say there was a, a food fight in the war room that was a big deal, that was a big part of the script, that Kubrick loved and it didn't work. I guess it got to be too silly. I've never seen the footage. I don't know if anybody has. I've never investigated, but it's a famous, famously described scene that was shot, but not included in the final film. Really, every time I see the film, I marvel from scene to scene how well that line is walked. Uh, that's right, sir. You are the only person authorized to do so. And although I uh, hate to judge before all the facts are in, it's beginning to look like uh, General Ripper exceeded his authority. I, I first became aware of it, Mandrake, during the physical act of love. Huh. The trailer for this movie is fantastic, like like the title sequence for the movie, which was uh, the trailer and the title sequence were done by Pablo Ferro, who is a terrific title designer, uh, kind of the hipper version of Saul Bass. He did a lot of work over the years. He's really, really great. You'll see Jonathan Demi movies, Stop Making Sense, has the same kind of typography as Dr. Strangelove. He was a great graphic designer that he must have contributed a lot to this and collaborated with Kubrick over this. The trailer itself, it's great because it's so much of the period with quick flashes of graphics and little bits of the movie scattered throughout in a way that evokes the movie. If you've seen it, it's hilarious. You watch the trailer, you go, oh, I don't have to see the movie again because Every little moment in this trailer reminds me of how great every single scene in the movie is. And I think if you've never seen the movie and you see this trailer, it looks like a vibrant, exciting, interesting, funny, odd piece, which is exactly what it is. Love the bomb. A moving picture. <laughs> Come on, bomb!